first turn it on, it'll go through a diagnostic check. It's basically making sure that everything is safe on the saw. There's a switch box over here that's giving me a red flashing light, a green light. As soon as the red flashing light de determines that everything is safe, that light will go off and I'll get a solid green light and then I can activate the saw. So I just pull the paddle and that'll turn it on. Even though I turned the saw off, I was touch that blade right now, it would activate the brake because it's still spinning and it was dangerous. But once it stops, I can safely touch the blade and nothing happens. If I happen to be touching that blade, the saw will not operate. So it's constantly monitoring what's going on with that blade. Okay. Now for demonstration purposes, we do use a hot dog. Now it's not because we don't think it's going to work. Okay. We've never had a failure of the safety system, right? But you do have to make contact with the blade for it to activate, and that's not something that I want to promote. Right? We don't want to promote sticking our finger in the blade. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so we use a hot dog, and that's a good that's a good stand-in for a finger. Now, another thing about saw stop saws, if I was just to push that through like that, it would cut through the hot dog. The hot dog does not have enough mass or capacitance to activate the system. So you can cut through nails and staples, things of that nature. That's not going to activate the system. I have to think physically touching the hot dog with my bare hand. That transfers my body's capacitance to the hot dog to the blade. Okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the saw on. I'm gonna push this through pretty fast because accidents don't happen slowly. The system will activate and the blade will disappear. Okay? Any questions before I go? No, one more time. Yes. You're using a hot dog with your hands on the hot dog. Yes. And then the purpose of that is so that my body's capacitance transfers through the hot dog to the blade. Yeah, yep, you're charging yeah. up the hot dog basically. Yeah. Yeah, you have, it's you a, have it's a stand in charge. my finger. My body has enough capacitance to set it up, but a hot dog on its own does not. That would just your cut finger's the a little tougher than that hot dog. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you'll see what, see what it does to the hot dog. Right, here we go. Okay, here we go. So that would be the extent of your injury. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd the blade go? We let the blade's momentum actually take it below the table. So when we stopped it, it still wanted to keep, keep spinning. So we let that momentum take it below the table. So the blade's below the table. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's out of, so it can't hurt you. So if we just stopped it, there's a chance that maybe your, your finger might have dragged across the blade or something like that. So, so there, there's, there's no that. cut on that hot dog. If there is. There may be a little graze. Yeah. So, so we're not at the hospital. We're not at the hospital. No. Wow. Drop down. I need to lower the carriage with the, with the elevation attack adjustment. What will happen is spring loaded pin will re engage and then I can raise the whole thing back up. Okay. There's a little red key here that holds the brake cartridge in place. I just turn that up, quarter turn out, pull it out. I don't need both wrenches because that thing's embedded in a block of aluminum. It's not going to move. Well, you got that on there tight, didn't you? <laughs> See that? Yeah, that's on a little too tight. Yeah, it generally does not need to be that tight. <laughs> so you can see the motor assembly keeps popping down because holy cow, man! <laughs> Did you put that on with Jeremy? Little impact wrench? Must have. There we go. You can edit that part out. <laughs> yeah, generally on these, these these nuts, it doesn't take, but it's just a quick. Because when you turn the saw on, it's going to tighten it a little bit. Okay. So now we got everything off there. There's nothing really holding it except there's a really strong spring that's forced against that arbor, so I can't just slide it off. So I take one of the wrenches and I use it as a pry bar. I'll pry the brake off a little bit. And the blade, and the brake. Just want to kind of walk it off of there. So, now you can kind of see what happened when you look at a before and after. Mm -hmm. See where that aluminum block jammed into the spinning blade? All that momentum was absorbed by that aluminum. There's absolutely no damage to the saw whatsoever. What about the blade? The blade's, the blade's done. I do not recommend you use it again because it's gone through some tremendous stresses. It went from 4,000 RPM to zero in about an inch of travel. 
If you look online, there's some, some high quality slow motion videos of this system. The blade looks like a piece of paper in the wind. We don't recommend you 